absolutely yep no oh, problem yes. no budget no problem sorry <laughs> showcasing yep. departmental research um, and I'm delighted to be presenting alongside um, Lena today. Yeah our third member of the team um, is away on holiday so we can't really complain we can offer <laughs> anything uh, really on her back which is going to be the two of us uh, presenting. Um, you've seen me before uh, presenting all sorts of uh, um, ideas and things but I think that is really the cherry on the cake hopefully we'll go through that in time so I'll just uh, move on yeah there we go Fantastic. So what we're going to do today is give you some background information on the department and team that hosted the showcase, give you some background information on the event, Lena's going to talk about how we organised the event and the communication strategies that we used, what it was like to experience the event, what we learned and our summary points. And this is a photo of us all. And interestingly enough, this is the only time that we met on a face-to-face -face basis throughout this whole experience. And there's Leona in the middle and she's actually on her honeymoon, which is lovely. So let's talk a little bit more about the background then. So Glasgow Caledonian University, if you don't know, is a post-92 university. And we have around about 22,000 students. We've got three um, campuses. We have a campus in London, in New York, but Glasgow is the main one. And that's where we are based. We have three schools, the School of Health and Life Sciences, Glasgow School for Business and Society, and the School of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment. And we are based in the School of Health and Life Sciences. So there's eight departments in that school, and most of the departments um, cover professions kind of allied to health, and we are the Department of Occupational Therapy, Human Nutrition and Dietetics, that's Leona and myself, and then of course we also have the Learning Development Centre where Lena is based, and that is a school-based role, and Lena's a digital specialist. So in terms of background to the event, it was Leona's idea. So she was inspired by a psychology student conference that she had seen um, taking place. So the Department of Psychology um, hosts a student conference where they can present their honours projects. And Leona was really impressed by the format of that um, kind of conference. It looked really professional. So she did a little bit of digging and found out that the format had been um, ran successfully by others in the university for a number of years. No point reinventing the wheel. So we found out that this was going to be an excellent opportunity to kind of replicate that. We were looking for an opportunity to showcase our research activity within the department. So our department formed just a couple of years before um, COVID. So we felt as if we were kind of quite a early or a kind of young department kind of coming together. And we're also a, quite a young department in terms of our research expertise. So there's a lot of kind of early career research taking place within the department. And we really wanted to have an opportunity where we could showcase some of that to both internally um, within the university, but also to external audiences as well. So um, just going to explain a little bit about how we organise this um, whole thing, because as Katie mentioned, um, it originally started kind of because COVID struck and we had to move online. So the psychology um, conference was the first one to to run in that format, and again, but there was no budget involved in any uh, sense. So I had to come up with a way to deliver the entire conference entirely online. So I worked initially with the team from psychology, and we realised that every tool we need to run this, we actually do have. They're just different tools spread around. So we. It was really just how do we organize it all to run seamlessly. Um, we used Teams to communicate and it worked really well. So we did exactly the same 
for this event, uh, we just set up a team uh, with Kate, Leona and me and had all our communication, all the shared files in there. So there was no a question of, oh, I didn't receive that email. Sorry, I haven't checked my email. It was all in one place. Any uh, platforms that we needed to use, the access information was in there. Everything was shared with everybody. And we also used Teams to run the actual live session for the event. So um, this is on the background. Teams was the core of the background. But externally, we run it through a website that uh, I designed. And um, you can probably type in this link. But I'll put it up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, the um, link will take you to um, a Wix website. The, I don't know if any of you have tried using Wix platform, but the free version um, is more than enough for things that you need to run. And it's also very, very user friendly. So you don't need any experience creating website. It's literally with the Wix. You, you see what you need and drop it on the website and it creates it. So very, very simple to use. So that was our external platform uh, where we put all the promotional links, every information that we could um, open to everybody was in there, including the booking link, uh, as well as obviously sending the booking uh, link through other uh, methods. The um, event was hosted in Teams, but the links to attend were on the website. So there was no need to send separate emails with links that people then cannot find was literally a page within the website that if you try to access uh, the program, it will tell you you need a password. The password you get when you register. So a simple way to protect from random people uh, just jumping in. You have to register in order to get the password, not that it's a difficult password. So if you want to see it, I'm going to put it in the chat. There's your password if you want to see the program itself. And um, as uh, um, someone attending, you literally just uh, click on, on the link to attend. The um, abstracts were all developed um, and available through the website. You can have a look at them. And at the end, we also added the attendance certificate um, there. So everything external was through that website. So all the information can go through there. So all we need to share is one link and uh, everything runs from there. So, um, so this is the set of tools we ended up uh, using. As I said, Teams was really the core of communication and organization and actually hosting the sessions. We use a uh, week website to uh, be external facing. We use Eventbrite as the booking tool um, and the Twitter to promote. There was a, a blog written as well uh, by um, Leona. I think it was writing it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Um, all the staff comms, um, mailing list, everything. Um, you know, we try to bombard and capture the uh, participant, the um, attendees uh, in any ways uh, possible. And we use MS Forms for feedback. So all of those tools are freely available for everybody. So um, if you have any other ideas what we could have added, please let me know because we're always on the lookout for new ideas we can incorporate. But um, all that we use worked really well and uh, quite seamlessly. The uh, team on the background um, that we created within Microsoft Teams actually was, as I said, the key. And uh, we only had four online meetings, and one of them was 10 minutes deciding on the color. So <laughs> three in reality, <laughs> three um, actual meetings online. Everything else was asynchronous comms. And the, the main thing was the task allocation and the deadlines, which we kind of already had, in a way, based on the previous um, conferences and events we've run. So we have a list of tasks, I'll give you a screenshot there, <laughs> and deadlines and allocating the job to someone, and then everybody can check basically um, if things are being done or not done. But we never needed to, because we found, lucky us, that all three of us were doers, not talkers. And that made a massive difference, because things were just running smoothly. Um, with plenty of time, um, you can probably see we kind of started talking around this time, but the actual work started 
in June and the event was in October. So um, there was plenty of time to do everything. There was never any big chunks of time that we had to dedicate to this process. And uh, this is way too overwhelming to go through, but you will see the slides afterwards. But these are the main points throughout the journey um, from start, sending the whole, deciding on the deadline and the actual event, and then working backwards to um, set up everything in time until we actually deliver the event. And so, um, as I said, I'm not going to go through all of this, but the last day, uh, the available day to publish your thing. Well, but look, because then it's all done, it's all dusted, and you can just run with it. It ended up being the case, but I was there on the background, just in case, because obviously the topic, all the, the research in occupational therapy and human nutrition that it is not my background, I'm digital therapy. So um, I was there uh, literally just monitoring, making sure everything is running smoothly and being able to answer my phone in case something goes uh, barely up, but everything runs absolutely fine. So um, I think, Katie, you can talk a little bit about that because that was your bag, mostly. It was indeed. So we had quite an active um, communication strategy. So as Lena's already highlighted, we used a range of different channels to really kind of publicise the event. So we had our internal and external communications as well. So we have our internal staff newsletter. That's our kind of um, GCU kind of connect um, to publicise it amongst um, university staff. Occupational therapy and um, human nutrition dietetics are professions quite often where they'll have large elements of the courses doing clinical kind of placements out in practice. So we had large mailing lists, um, particularly for occupational therapy, um, where students have been on placement. So we were able to make good use of those and we publicised it um, using those mailing lists. We also um, we've got a blog, a GCU um, occupational therapy blog, and we wrote an article about preparing for the um, event and um, what we were going to um, be talking about at it to publicise it with um, links of course um, to register. We've got quite an active um, Twitter account and that resulted in some international um, reposts as well and of course we advertise to our students on their Blackboard um, year sites. So we used um, all of these channels to have some key prompts. We had to save the date prompt for when we kind of launched and decided on when the date was going to be call for submissions for people to um, showcase their research and also a deadline approaching both for submissions but also for um, registering um, as well for the for the, the session. So uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about that. I think I spoke with Mary um, earlier today um, how much prep we did in terms of presenters because as much as you organize at the end, participants see the presenters. So we have to make sure the presenters were set properly. So we wrote detailed instructions for the presenters and we wanted them really to make sure they use PowerPoint Live and present their slides within Teams rather than sharing screen. Because sharing screen has some drawbacks, as I'm sure you're well aware, random pop-ups, people seeing things they shouldn't be seeing. And also, um, if it's shared by um, sharing a screen, the links are not available. So someone needs to basically copy the links and make sure they're populated. But if you do it through PowerPoint Live, the links are active and they can be used. So we really wanted them to use um, PowerPoint Live also for accessibility reasons as well. It's um, a lot easier for, um, for participants to um, engage with the material if it is uh, shared that way. However, um, we ran two practice sessions as well, two days, three days before that, for people to, for presenters to come and practice, making sure everything is right, you know, the way good organizers should do. And um, we insisted on copies of the presentations just in case something happens, like what happened today. It's perfectly normal. It happens pretty much in every event. And we have to uh, share one of the presentations as a keynote actually couldn't share, so um, we have to share it ourselves. But that wasn't a problem because we insisted on having those copies. 
Um, obviously, as I said, I was there um, preparing um, and making sure that I'm there as a backup during the event. And um, I, I'll, probably, I'll emphasize a little bit more when we go to learning points, but sending detailed instructions to uh, presenters, you would think, um, and having two practice sessions, uh, you would think that should be more than enough to get everybody prepped. There were two presenters that actually attended those practice sessions, and they were the only two that actually did it the way we asked them to. Everybody else shared screen, which we told them not to do. <laughs> Quite work the way we wanted. <laughs> um, so, in terms of the attendee um, experience, we try to simplify this process as much as possible. So, obviously, first point is being made aware of that event through multiple channels that we use, hopefully, captured them, uh, and then simply booking a place by Eventbrite. Very common, people um, pretty much all have uh, an account with Eventbrite, so that's an easy route as well. Um, then during the registration um, and then the confirmation email that they get as the password for accessing, including all the instructions. Um, again, we send instructions obviously to the, um, for, through Eventbrite um, a day before the event itself, um, but it has the link to the website, instructions, how to click on the um, program, um, what the password is, and then just clicking on the link. So on the event, on the day of the event, all they have to do is go to the website, go to the program, choose whatever session they want to attend and simply click on it and it goes straight into um, the team session um, through the browser, even if they don't have uh, teams installed. And um, at uh, the end of uh, the event, we ask them uh, to complete quick feedback and then we also made available uh, attendance certificates. All of those uh, obviously are optional, the last two, but in terms of the path, they simply book a place to Eventbrite, they receive all the information via Eventbrite, and on the day, just click on the link and click on the session they want to join. It's as simple as that. So we try to, as I said, to keep it simple and as streamlined as possible. Oh. <laughs> So some learning <laughs> points <laughs> from the day. So we learned that presenters don't necessarily read the lovely clear instructions that Lena um, prepared for us. So that was a, a key um, learning point because obviously you want the attendees to get the most out of the, the presentations. And that's something that, you know, we'll have a think about um, for next time how to communicate that. Two minutes we, to go. <laughs> we also had um, two channels running and um, what we found is that participants didn't switch channels. They just stayed in the main um, channel. So um, again, something to think about for um, future events. We heavily promoted the event and we got a good range of attendees, but um, human nutrition and dietetics perhaps um, didn't have the same opportunity to promote um, the event, so there was kind of more one profession than the other. Um, but the simplicity was valued by attendees. It was really easy to register and to engage in on the day. We actually tagged along another activity to the event. Um, we had a research clinic the next day, and that was a really easy thing to do um, to kind of add value to it. It's really easy to replicate. It was a great success and it's going to be an annual event. So we are in the process of actually trying to organize the next one <laughs> or getting the initial talk. So, so it, <laughs> it was much easier than we thought. Um, it looked much more professional than we thought possible. And the workload was much less than we anticipated. It really wasn't um, for the, 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 how it looked and as slick as it was on the day, um, the workload was much less than anticipated. And there was free tools for everything. Um, Lena was um, really good at identifying the, the free tools. So just ask around if there's um, something that you think that might be available because we found there was. And it really did generate interest for the department, both internally to the university and externally. Just some quick stats. Um, we have the 13 presenters. So it was just one afternoon. Uh, four staff, um, seven from students and two external presenters. Um, as the case mentioned, there were two streams of sessions, but I thought for simplicity, I'm just going to keep the main channel and one of the parallel sessions 
in the same team's room, and that resulted in people just being lazy and not moving. So we, we think we're going to experiment with having one for all the events that are single events um, and a completely separate channel. So we are forcing people to go out and choose actively one of the two streams. So hopefully we'll have a better balance um, of attendance. Um, and uh, we had um, 88 um, attendees, um, including international, as Kate mentioned. So Twitter was um, a good way to promote the event. And just to give you a flavor of the feedback we got, um, they mostly thought that it was um, a really simple to attend the, the great variety of research um, that's being presented was um, really useful for people to see. And um, it, uh, they have good feedback in terms of the, the experience of attending as well. So, uh, that was a, a good another good indicator that it worked in the way we designed it. Okay. Um, just to give you a flavor of the range of uh, places this um, attendees come from, as you can see, um, there are obviously themes being universities and the NHS and council, but the spread is astonishing. So, um, just to give you a, a flavor of how far and wide that reached for really the first time being run. And final slide, take home messages. It was really easy to do. It had absolutely no budget, was free. And um, we thought only as successful as the team involved because it was very slick. Um, and as Lena says, we are a team of doers but it is possible and it worked really well.